Letitia's Third Eye POV. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Welcome to the channel. And thank you for watching. Culture Vultures in Black and White. Warning, the following images and or content may be disturbing to some viewers. Viewer discretion is strongly advised. It's time to turn our focus to cultural assimilation that in my opinion has turned into self-hate. Unfortunately, because we were colonized over here in the Western Hemisphere, and of course other countries and islands have been colonized as well, but I can only touch on what I see around me, what I know, that, and I'm also guilty of. And so a lot of it is unawareness, really. A lot of times we are unaware that we have been colonized as a people to believe that who we are and where we come from and what we look like and to embrace our natural beauty and standards and create a new beauty standard within ourselves and to love who we are, love our skin that we're in, love our hair, regardless of how curly or coily or 4A or 4C it is, we have got to wake up and understand that our natural self is beautiful. From our nose, from our hair, our skin, our lips, we are beautiful people, our curves, and I'm not saying that we all have those same features, but it is prominent within the melanated people. And unfortunately, when we were colonized and stripped from our traditions and our culture, we lost a lot. And that is one of the reasons I wanted to create this video was so that we can understand that we were robbed. And now it's time to take back what is ours take our culture back, take our love for ourselves back, enjoy looking at ourselves, appreciate who we are, appreciate what we look like. Apparently others are starting to f understand and love who we are because the tables have turned. But we have to understand that it is us that has to love ourselves. If you can't love yourself, then who else can love you for who you are? And I'm not saying it's not okay to do your own thing, but ask yourself, why are you doing it? Why are you putting a wig on that looks like a colonizer's hair, straight and flat? Our hair is like antennas. If we wear our natural hair, for the most part, most all of us, our hair will stand up and that is because it is intended to do so. When we rise above those frequencies, those lower frequencies and start to appreciate who we are and love ourselves for who we are and what the universe created us as, then we can move forward and we can unify and begin to embrace who we are and love ourselves and stop looking outside of ourselves for that love. So I just want us to really think through, I don't want anyone to feel any judgment or any um, sense of being lost or um, unaware. This is to bring self-awareness. This is for us to say, man, what are we doing to ourselves? Why are we doing this to ourselves? Who taught us to hate ourselves? And we should not. And we will not. We will not continue to hate who we are as a people. And that shows on the outside. 4C is, 4C is something like that. This is what 4C can do. 4C can, but I'm not with 4C can bend though. Like, it's like, I'm not with 4C. 4C can bend over and lift my ass. Good luck trying to finger comb it. Good luck trying to put a body tooth through it the first couple of minutes. Jesus Christ. Why even, God was like, let me get this bitch 4C. I remember when my aunt said she could not manage my hair and so she needed to perm it because it was so thick and I was a teenager 
And so from that point forward, I think I was like 14, 13, 14 years old. From that point forward up until I was in my early 30s, I was perming my hair. I was putting these cancer-causing chemicals in my hair, unbeknownst to me. And that's why it is a learned behavior. It's a learned behavior to hate who and what you are. Because other than that, I wouldn't have put anything in my hair. It was taught to me to hate my hair because it was not manageable. So I want y'all to think about that as you watch these few videos. Show y'all the box. Yes, we're doing it. If you're not happy, mm, just leave. Just leave. Because we have to my hair. My natural sister's in the background. So I'm literally sitting right now. And I saw that. So I was like contemplating because there's extra strength than normal. And I. Oh my gosh. Better ingredients. Better pieces. Guys, this thing is telling me to cut my hair, which I'm not gonna do because they want me to do a test strip. My sister told me to cut my hair. It's all good until you get a letter from some attorneys telling you that you may qualify to be included in a class action lawsuit for placing carcinogenic chemicals into your crown. And then you start to realize that, man, this is scary. Like I could literally have put myself in harm's way. And you might never know until you get that diagnosis. Millions of African-American women use chemical hair relaxer products on a regular basis. Recent scientific research has found that the regular exposure to the chemicals used in these hair relaxer products disrupts the hormone system and can lead to a significantly increased risk of uterine cancer. A study published in the Journal of the National Cancer Institute found that the regular use of chemical hair relaxer over long time periods resulted in a twofold increase in the risk of uterine cancer. In October 2022, a lawsuit was filed against L'Oreal and several other cosmetic companies alleging that exposure to the chemicals in their hair relaxer products caused the plaintiff to develop uterine cancer at age 28. This is the first hair relaxer uterine cancer lawsuit filed and thousands more could potentially be filed moving forward. These lawsuits will allege that the manufacturers of hair relaxer products knew or should have known that the chemicals in their products could increase the risk of uterine cancer and other hormone-related cancers. Don't think that I'm leaving you out. Sew-ins, tracks, micro braids, all of these additional extensions we put into our hair can do just as much damage, if not more. Although you might not be putting chemicals directly into your crown, these can still cause adverse effects. Even the glue itself is probably toxic to your scalp and the pores. But I want you to see the effects of placing these other people hair. Because I don't know whose people hair they are. They could be from India. They could be from the Middle East. They could be from the colonizer for all I know. But these two can cause adverse effects to your scalp, to your crown, my sisters. Please watch and understand why I want you to understand the importance of loving yourself and the natural state that you are in. Embrace that because you are beautiful without all of this excess. Now, these are what we call cowlicks. Cowlicks 
are what you see when someone continues to injure their follicles of their scalp. They lose their hair, typically along the edges. And of course, over time, it just all, they end up losing all of it because the injury is repetitive from the pulling and the tugging and the just constant stress on your hair follicles that it cannot any longer grow. And you will find it happening within the edges first. I'm not saying that it won't happen elsewhere because over time it does end up thinning out the rest of your hair. And you'll have some George Jefferson look at the end of the day. So this is just to inform and educate. That way we understand what we are doing to ourselves and how it is chronically affecting us over time. I thought I loved myself, I, you know, through and through. Deep, deep, deep down, I hated my hair. I didn't know what it was. I didn't want to know what the natural texture looked like. I didn't want to see the length. I was like one of those naturals who was natural, but I was like, I'm not going to go natural. Like, you ain't about to see me with no afro. When I really, really studied, I came to the realization that at the end of the day, our community, again, is still under bondage because yes, there were laws, even such as way back before uh, the time periods you were even referring to, like the Tignan laws. I mean, where women in New Orleans, is there was a law where they had to cover their hair because they were basically um, receiving attention. When I think about it in that aspect, in today's time, Hey baby, hey girl, you covering up your glory. I get it, you may not know how to do it. YouTube is available of yourself and let's rise above uh, this bondage. Cultural assimilation turns self-hate when we don't embrace our natural features. Girl, don't do it, it's not worth it. I'm not gonna do it, girl. I'm just thinking about it, 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 I'm just thinking about it. I did it. When we learn our historical genetic makeup, we grow to understand that we don't need thinner and smaller noses. We typically come from warmer climates. That's why we have broader noses. We don't need the thin, small noses that the colonizer needs because they came from the colder climates. And so that's why we have the broader noses that we have. And just because someone else tells you it's more aesthetic to have a thin nose does not make it so. That's their opinion. Cultural assimilation turns self-hate and the skin bleaching epidemic. Skin bleaching is at an all time high. So much so to where some countries are actually banning skin bleaching products from their country. It is causing skin problems, irritations, deformities, all kinds of other issues. And not to mention the long-term effects. Some people are even getting cancer from some of the skin bleaching products. So just like the Caucasoid who tans their skin to look darker, we are actually putting cancer causing chemicals in our body to look lighter to be two, three shades lighter. Sometimes the skin doesn't even look right. You have some people looking like Pepto-Bismol after they've bleached out all of their melanin. And it doesn't leave that look that you're actually trying to obtain. And so you really gotta ask yourself, ask yourself, what are you bleaching your skin for? If your Caucasoid friend or counterpart is tanning to look darker like you what makes you bleach your skin to look lighter like them what is it that you're trying to obtain what is it out of it that you really are trying to obtain why is it did you tell yourself you need to do this and so this is so very important because it affects us long-term, our health is at stake. So please rethink, analyze yourself, do some self-reflecting prior to considering even putting any toxins onto your skin. And in this next clip, I'll, it's so sad to hear this 
young lady speak of her mother this way, but I needed to put this, this clip in here to give you an example of how much we hate the skin we're in. This young lady has such a disdain for her mother that she doesn't even call her mother. She doesn't even recognize her as her mom. She hates herself so much, she cannot stand the fact that she is in the skin she's in. So watch this Judge Maybelline clip, and then I have other clips following that, just to show how much we hate our skin that we're in. And hopefully, we will look at this and say, man, we definitely need to make some changes. We need to start loving ourselves. We need to love our skin love the melanin that you were brought into this universe with growing up with a mother like her it's not easy why look at her we don't look anything alike nothing i don't even know okay stop you told me to look at her i'm gonna look at her now i'm looking at you yeah look you at don't me. look anything alike no why why because do you say that she has that dark skin oh. has that dark skin oh. has that dark skin oh. Okay, she has that dark skin. So, so what? What do you have? I have light skin. And so mothers and daughters and families don't come in different shades? Oh yeah, that's great. But I realized growing up that people with that kind of skin has it a little bit harder. People with that kind of skin has it a little bit harder. And people with that kind of skin has it a little bit harder. And, and you know, I worked really hard just to keep my life as easy as possible. Okay, you need to hurry up and explain yourself to me. Your Honor, growing up with a dark mother was so embarrassing. All of my friends were white. No. Everybody was white. Where did the you people, grow up? The guys I dated were white. Where did you grow up? My friends were white, Alabama. And what, how old are you? Your Honor, I'm 25 years old. So what part of Alabama did you grow up in that all your friends were white? Birmingham. In Birmingham. And you're 25 years old. Yeah. Which means that that was in, what, 1990-something you were born? 1990. And all of your friends were white? Yes. So if you grew up in Birmingham, Alabama, and all your friends were white, you didn't grow up with your mother? She was barely around. She, she was busy cleaning up after white people. Ooh. I didn't want to live that poor life. Mrs. Johnson, when this child of yours was born that's over here, yes, Your Honor. where were you living? We were living in Alabama, Your Honor, and I was um, cleaning houses for a living, Your Honor, and so we uh, ended up living with different white families as I had my job there. So that's why she said all her friends were white? Yes, ma'am. And she went to schools. She went to school in the area of the families. I mean, the families that you lived and worked for. She went to school there. Yes, ma'am. And do yes, you realize and understand why you were able to do that? Yes, because she was poor and uneducated, and so I had to live a life of struggling. And like I said, I tried. Once I got away from her, I tried my best not to live that kind of life. So how'd you get away from her? I earned enough money to get away from her, and I started dating this white guy who whose family had a lot of money. At what age? Sixteen. And then you changed your life. I mean, you changed your identity yes, I went or something. To college. I got an education, All something right. that she does not have. You won't see and is that her fault that she doesn't have an education? Yes. Why? She's her own woman. I'm not her mother. You said you went to college? Yes. You sound like an ignorant fool. What are you doing? See, I have told you plenty times to stop using the shit crates. I don't cut off your skin, but you only don't cut off your skin. Babe, if I stop using it, I'll not be beautiful like all those girls on this planet. See, let me tell you, bleaching cream does not bring her back. It's not like this. You're an African girl. Those skin glow. That skin girl. I'm going to throw this out. We don't need it. Babe, I'm afraid to go. Yes! Babe, yeah! one moment. Yes! Yeah! Be beautiful. I'm a strong girl, yeah. yeah, yeah. You need to stop bleaching your skin, LOL. No filter. Why the fuck would I bleach my face and not the rest of my body? I also feel that when you can spa for 20 days, as you can see, it's very intense. You can see now, it's peeling off, and this is December period. So your instant body wash, the white instant body wash, it's very, very effective. Just for 20 days, the result is instant. And I'm so feeling that body can't spot. Another one. Who the hell put the puppets in the freezer? I did. What you gonna do about it? Nothing. Bruh.
dangers of skin bleaching can cause kidney failure, light sensitivity, lung damage, high blood pressure, neurological problems, risk of skin cancer, numbness. Hukumar kula de kia yowana magunguna da abinchi na kasawa tu nafdak tabada sana wa kancha tayi declare instead of emergency can skin bleaching. Ina kuma su skin bleaching. Chicken one nang labaren sunche seventy seven percent nama ta anajeria suna bleaching. Awan suka zo kusa demu suni ento go suna de fifty nine percent. Um, 77 percent so kechi. Babu wata chuta, zata kama 77 percent na population. Uh, so da Allah ameda hankali. Akwe hii uh, video da na hii kan ilu ling um, bleaching. Na hii pinin inshi kampechi na dang Allah ajaduba ameda hankali. Um, Harma kuma maza masu bleaching ameda hankali adena. Allah isa amudaji. Remember you are the original man and woman. Be true to your authentic self. Embrace and love yourself and never water yourself down to fit in with anyone else because imitation is the best form of flattery. And almost everywhere you look, you are being imitated. You so black. You so black. When you smile, the stars come out. You so black when you born, the God come out, black is not. Black when it's wrong and black when You so black, ooh, you so black. When you smile, the stars come out. Baby, you so black. When you're born, the God come out. Y'all so about to Letitia too, cause she be dropping that real yeah, shit. Yeah, shout out to Letitia. Letitia, third eye POV, bless up. I'm talking about you putting in the work. The teacher's third eye point of view. Letitia. Oh yeah, especially my sister Letitia, boy. She, she, she's already here. I'm about to shout out Leticia. Now you're gonna feel it. Leticia's quick chain. Shout out to Leticia, y'all. Those editing skills are very sharp. I'm loving it. I'm loving it. Subscribe to her channel. Leticia. Leticia's been getting them. Yeah, hey, Leticia Page is hot. Leticia Page is lit. Go sub up to Leticia. So show the sister some support. Yo, definitely sub up to uh, Leticia Third Eye POV. Facts. Make sure y'all sub up.